Friends, good mornings. My name is Father Charles Smith. I am the vicar here at St. Michael and All Angels. We are excited that you are worshiping with us today. The Reverend Rachel Rickenbaker joins us in the virtual pulpit here at the stream, and she will bring the word, the good news of God in Jesus Christ. This will be our final Sunday with guest preachers for a while, as I will be back in the virtual pulpit next Sunday at 1130, 1130, there we go, in the morning. Be sure to connect with us in the chat box. Leave a comment for us. Let us know how we can best be a blessing in your life. And as always, if our ministry is a blessing for you and has helped you out in any way, consider a financial contribution. Good morning, St. Michael and all angels. Thank you again for the opportunity to be with you this morning and to preach the word. Our gospel is from the gospel according to Luke chapter 11. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. No one likes to wait. Our daughter Eleanor just celebrated her fourth birthday, and throughout this past year, almost daily, she has asked the question, When is my birthday? When am I turning four? And when I was pregnant this past year with our second daughter, she always asked, when is the baby going to be getting here? And now that the baby is here, she says, when will baby Abigail be bigger and old enough to be able to play with me? I imagine pretty soon we'll be hearing the words, when is it going to be my fifth birthday? But this is not the case just for children. This is also the case for adults. We are... Notorious for getting frustrated about the DMV having such long lines. They get frustrated in traffic and having to wait in long lines in stores and restaurants. But we wait for good things too. We wait for loved ones to arrive and we wait for holidays to happen. We also wait for appointments and procedures to take place and diagnoses and test results to be given. Life is a waiting game. And time is so precious, it never seems like there's enough of it. It seems time can sometimes simultaneously be too quick and too slow. Well, why am I talking about waiting today at all? In our gospel reading for this morning, we hear a lot about prayer and trust. And those are two things that develop with waiting. When Jesus' disciples asked him to teach them to pray, perhaps they needed some encouragement and something to hold on to. Life with Jesus, traveling and healing and teaching must have seemed to move pretty quickly. And yet, the disciples asked when and how God's kingdom would come. 
They wondered when things would really change. When, when would the Romans be brought out of power? When would poverty end and when would people's burdens truly be lifted? I can only imagine they were tired and weary of waiting. Jesus' arrival was something they had long been waiting for, but now things didn't always happen as quickly or in the ways that they expected the Messiah to act. Jesus is praying in this morning's gospel, and his disciples want to learn from him. So Jesus teaches them a prayer, what we call the Lord's Prayer. It is a prayer that both confirms who God is and reassures Jesus' followers that they can come to him, come to God, as children come to a parent. Jesus opens the prayer not with Almighty and powerful God, though he is that, but instead, Abba, a term of endearment. We are reminded that we can come to God as children come to a loving parent with our needs and our concerns. We pray for God's kingdom to come, and Matthew adds in, Thy will be done. We pray for sustenance, daily, bre daily bread, and even the Eucharist. We pray for forgiveness and for protection in times of trial. Then Jesus additionally reassures his disciples and us of who God really is with a parable that we see following the prayer. It's a strange little story. We may resonate with the friend who has locked his doors and has gone to bed with his children. They're, they're all asleep. His whole household is asleep. I don't know about you, but I don't love having to get up out of bed once I'm already in bed. My husband can attest to that. Get kind of grumpy. But in this time period, in these biblical times, it would have been dishonorable for the man to stay in bed and not get up and show his friend hospitality. So he eventually gets up, waking up his whole household in the process, and finally, sort of begrudgingly, gives his friend some bread. The point that Jesus is making is that if people, friends even, who are finicky and self-interested, if people would give to their friend in need, how much more does our loving and merciful God give to us in need? When we are persistent, or a better translation, shameless before God, God hears us. We can come before God shamelessly, which is what he desires. Jesus says, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. We may find ourselves this morning saying, but I have asked and I have prayed about this thing or that thing, and I don't always hear an answer, or I don't always hear the answer I want to hear. It is hard for us to trust that God is at work sometimes. There are many around us who say prayer does not work and only our actions matter. When we pray for peace and we don't see it immediately, we can easily give up hope. When we pray for loved ones or for ourselves, for our health, and it doesn't come, it's easy to lose faith and trust. We have to be careful not to make claims about God that we don't know. When someone is waiting for an answer to prayer, or perhaps we are the ones waiting, rather than having to come up with reasons why things happen, we can rely on what we do know. What we do know from Scripture, from the very beginning, is God's faithfulness, God's constant faithfulness to his people. Scripture shows us God's love for his people, his never-failing grace, and his desire for us to come to him in faith. We know that God has defeated evil, Satan, sin, and even death itself by sending his son Jesus Christ to die for us on the cross and to rise again that we might have new life and be with him forever. And we know that we have the Holy Spirit with us now as we await Christ's return. At that time, we know 
that his kingdom will be ushered fully in and we will see our Lord face to face. But on this side of the resurrection, we still experience the powers of sin and evil and death, and they make life awfully difficult. We don't live fully in the ways that we know the kingdom is meant to be. We see war, we see violence, sickness, and death. But we also see glimpses of God's grace and beauty around us in acts of kindness, in signs of new life, and in works of Christian love. Paul's letter to the Romans reminds us that in all things God works for good for those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. It is hard to wait. That is true. It is hard to trust God at work when we are awaiting answers to prayer and we don't see the results immediately or when we feel like they should be there. But indeed, we are reminded today that the Lord hears us and wants us to come to him shamelessly as a child comes to a loving parent. There's nothing too big or too small to bring before him. And though we don't always see the answers we desire, and in though we don't always see the kingdom fully now, it is ever breaking in all around us. And so we continue to pray to God, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So shall it be. Amen.